And welcome back to Cecil TV's 30 at 6. It is Monday, April 23rd. I'm Allison Donnelly. And I'm Rob Churnside, and I am glad that we're having a little bit of spring-like weather finally, Allison. Yes, we had a beautiful weekend. What did you do? This weekend, I helped save the planet with yes. many other Cecil County residents. I went to Household Hazardous Waste Day at the Cecil County Landfill. You remember we had Cliff on here oh, yeah. last time talking all about it. I did great. I got all my paint together and all my used motor oil and everything inside of a cooler. I went around a corner and the cooler tipped over and it went all over the back of my truck. And when oh, I got no. there, they said, you made a mess. And they gave me the stuff to soak it up. And it oh, was that's great. great. Very organized. A lot of people came up there to get rid of all their uh, dangerous things to keep mm -hmm. them out of the environment and have them safely dealt with and recycled. It's a beautiful thing. I, I hope everybody does it again next year. Yeah, it really is a great, great event. So on tonight's show, we've got um, Melissa from the Best Kept Secret Tour. She'll be talking to us about how the tour works. You've probably seen her signs around the county. We've also got a fellow named Ralph Nestor who's going to talk to, him, talk to us about his really cool bird carvings. And then we've got Tom Hannum from Cycle for, or the Cecil Land Trust to talk about Cycle for Cecil. Cycle for Cecil, Saturday. Yes. Should be good weather then, too. I hope so. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure the weather is supposed to be beautiful, like through the rest of the week, maybe not including tomorrow and Wednesday. Well, that's great. Yep. And now for the news. At this time, the Cecil County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for any information in connection with Saturday's shooting in the Winding Brook community. At about 6.35 p.m., one man was killed and two were wounded in the area of the basketball court on Chestnut Drive. If you witnessed this crime or have any information, please call 410-392-2111. Last Thursday, Elkton High School language arts teacher Stacy Lamb was selected as 2018 Cecil County Teacher of the Year. According to the Superintendent Dr. Diet Devine, Stacy's genuine love of teaching is evident in how she interacts with her students, in her dedication to her school community, and in her drive to constantly seek out new and innovative ideas to bring into her classroom and share with her colleagues. Stacy will go on to compete for the title of Maryland Teacher of the Year. In more school news, the Cecil County Board of Education is preparing for Dr. Devine's retirement on June 30th and has narrowed a list of 13 candidates for the job of superintendent down to three. The three finalists are two outside candidates, Dr. Sean Bolson and Dr. Monique Whitley Phillip, and one internal candidate, current Associate Superintendent for Education Services, Dr. Jeffrey Lawson. Stay tuned as Cecil TV meets each candidate this week and reports on the board selection. Beginning on April 30th, 2018, commuters in Cecil County will be able to catch a ride with Cecil Transit to and from the Perryville Mark Station and the Newark SEPTA Station with one intermediate stop at Cecil College's Northeast Campus. Currently, the 20-mile gap between the two stations is the only gap in about 460 miles of commuter rail between Richmond, Virginia and New London, Connecticut. For more information, visit www.ceciltransit.com. The Cecil County Health Department will offer spring rabies vaccination clinics on Saturday, May 5, 2018 at Waterwich Fire Company and on Saturday, May 12, 2018 at Cecil County Health Department. Times for both clinics are 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. for cats and ferrets only and 10 a.m. to noon for dogs, cats, and ferrets. The cost is $7 per animal. Please bring exact change. National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is Saturday, April 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m at which time Cecil County residents can turn in unused or expired medications for safe disposal at several locations. Participating collection sites include the Cecil County Sheriff's Office, the Maryland State Police Northeast and JFK Highway Barracks, as well as the Elkton, Northeast, Perryville, and Rising Sun Police Departments. And now for a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. 
You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle. So why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? I'm home. Wow, it's hot in here. Grandma says call the Moon Man. <laughs> moon Man, the AC is out and my family is melted. At your service. There you go. Mission accomplished. Thanks, Moon Man. <sighs> the house is nice and cool again. Moon Man, you're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Hi, I'm Allie Charles. I'm the Reader Services Librarian here at the Cecil County Public Library. And right now, I'm reading Lab Girl by Hope Jarin. Lab Girl is a memoir uh, that Hope Jarin wrote about her time as a scientist, as a, as a lab girl. Um, she grew up in Minnesota in her father's community college laboratory and also her mother's garden and library. So she has this background of science, but also literature. And so it makes for this interesting blend of, of beautiful writing about science, which is, can be very unique. Um, and she writes very passionately about what she does. And also there's a good amount of humor in it as well. Um, so I recommend this book. And Lab Girl is also a part of the Longwood Gardens Community Read, which is a new partnership we have with Longwood Gardens. Uh, the Community Read is where they choose a book and they invite regional institutions like libraries or schools to host book discussions on, on books that talk about horticulture and science so that people can talk and learn about these um, topics. And so, for us, the community read is coming to a close. It started in March, but there's still a way to participate. If you're interested, you can join our Facebook um, online readers group through our um, Facebook, which is Cecil County Public Library. And the real time discussion will be happening April 28th. Um, that's a Sunday at 7 p.m. We usually don't do book discussions on Sundays because we are closed on Sundays, but we thought that, you know, since it's online, we have the freedom to do it whenever we want. So it'll be Sunday, April 28th at 7 p.m. Um, and all participants can earn the chance to win Longwood Gardens tickets. And um, so if you're interested or need help finding the page, you can come into any of our branches and a staff member can help you out. Um, also, if you're interested in topics um, about gardening or you want to go to an event to learn more, um, we have a lot of great events um, coming up this May and June. So be sure to check out your library link um, on the website or at your local branch. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to Cecil TV's 30 at 6. I'm here with Melissa Nordhoff from the Best Kept Secrets Tour, which is a really cool company I hope you've heard about. But if you haven't, you'll learn about it tonight. Melissa, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. I enjoy it. So, how, so tell us about the Best Kept Secret Tour and how you came up with this idea. I started it actually 10 years ago. It's my 10-year right. anniversary. And I started it because my family owned a small business, um, and we wanted a way to get new faces through the mm -hmm. door. And I was also uh, wanting to raise funds for a local charity. So I kind of combined those two goals and created the Shopping Food and Fun Tour called the Best Kept Secrets cool. Tour. And it really promotes small businesses. That's what we feature. Mm -hmm. So how does it work? So people actually buy a ticket, which the, the ticket comes in a goodie bag like mm -hmm. this, and it has some fun promotional items in it. Uh, the ticket costs $10. A dollar is always donated to a local charity, which mm -hmm. this time it's for CASA. Right. And uh, the folks, that when you buy a ticket, you get a booklet, and it actually describes each of the 23 businesses that you're going to be visiting. Uh, you get a map showing you how to get around. You get coupons from every business that you can use during the tour. Plus, you get to try to win over $1,000 in gift cards from the businesses. So you're kind of playing games as you go around, having a lot of fun. 
and every business has something special planned for the tour goers. So you're going to have gifts, games, refreshments, door prizes, just all kinds of fun things. That's so fun. Yeah. And so how long is the, a ticket valid the in ticket, Cecil and Hartford counties, I should say? Yeah, it actually um, runs from April 26th, so, so this Thursday it starts, and it goes the whole way through to May 12th. Mm -hmm. The ticket's valid every day. You can use it as many days as you want, so you don't have to feel rushed. You can take your time and really enjoy it. That's great. And Melissa has been kind enough to donate four gift bags to Cecil TVs for us to give away to our viewers. So if you're watching this interview and you're interested in winning one of the four gift bags, send an email with the subject line Best Kept Secrets Tour to info at cecil.tv and the first four reviewers who, who send us an email will get one of the gift bags. So say say um, one of our viewers or someone who's already bought a ticket has um, had so much fun mm -hmm. in the Best Kept Secrets tour here. Right. Um, where, what other towns can they check out in the next next season? Well, I actually uh, have Best Kept Secrets tours in a total of 14 counties mm -hmm. through Pennsylvania and Maryland. But some of the ones that are coming up after uh, this one, uh, Montgomery County in Pennsylvania, Berks County, and we also have Cumberland County going on. So those are the three uh, additional spring tours that we have. Um, all that info can be uh, accessed at the website, bestkeptsecretstour.com. Very cool. And if you want to learn about the next tours or just want to get more information about Melissa and her company, that, that's the best place yes. to learn more. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hello, my name is Jill Welsheimer. I am the band director and theater instructor at Perryville High School. I'm a 25-year teacher, and this is my 23rd production here. And we are performing the musical Les Miserables, which has been on Broadway for over 25 years. And the reason we chose this show is because uh, we happen to have the talent and the kids available this year. It's really unusual to have so many young men who are uh, talented vocally that can perform the show. And this year it happened to be um, the stars aligned and we were able to perform this show. And it's been a lot of fun, but it's been a real challenge. What is this fighting all about? Will someone tear these two apart? This is a factory, not a circus. Come on, ladies, settle down. I run a business of repute. I am the mayor of this town. Hi, uh, I'm John Murphy. I play Jean Valjean in Perryville High School's production of uh, Les Miserables. Um, I am in 11th grade. And, uh, you know, this musical is really great because you get such, such a range of emotion that you get to act through throughout the entire show. And, you know, you really get to connect with these characters and reflect, you know, like, um, this moral, you know, I see this in my own life. and. How can I apply this here and use this there? And it, you know, kind of helps you become a better person. So, yeah, that's why I like this show. Hi, my name is Emma Coggins. Um, I'm a senior here at Perryville High School. I've been involved with the musicals here for three years. Um, and next year, I will be attending the University of Delaware for vocal education. Um, something I'm really thankful for here is the relationship that the cast members have with one another. Because these are the same kids who are in band and choir and sports. And these are really lifelong friends that we're making. And it's a really great opportunity to create something beautiful together. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Barton. I'm a senior here at Perryville High School. I play Eponine in Les Mis. Um, I also play a lovely lady, which is just a nice way of saying I'm a whore. And I also, yeah, that's it. I've been doing uh, theater here at Perryville for four years. Um, I'm, I participate in choir as well and play soccer and lacrosse. Um, it's been a great experience working with Ms. Walshheimer all these four years. It's been great seeing the program grow. Um, a lot of people getting attracted to it because of how, how good we are. Um, 
yeah. My plans, I'm planning on going to University of Delaware to, um, to study choral music education under the professors there, so I'm really excited. It should be good. Beignets, coffee, fruit trays, seat cushions. You'll thank me later. Hi, I'm Jason Woods. I'm a senior here at Perryville High School. I've been involved in the theater program for all four years we've done it. Uh, a favorite part of being in the theater program here is we go to really great lengths to try and draw the audience into the show, really make it feel like the characters are alive and like you're going through the story with them. And I think that that's something that's really unique to hear that I, I'm really excited to be a part of. Uh, my plans for after high school are to go to the University of Maryland at College Park for aerospace engineering. All right, um, hello, I'm Dale Watson. I'm a senior at Perryville High School. I've been involved in the theater program for four years. This year has been particularly uh, more interesting just because the amount of involvement I had in every role and how much dedication you have to do in order to be a different character instead of being just one person on there. And that's kind of what the school does really well is that each person is an element to making the play that much better, no matter how big or small the role is. So this is a great opportunity for me this year, so it's for Lima is. Um, my plans for after high school is to attend Lynchburg College to uh, pursue a career in sports medicine or be an athlete. <laughs> Portray it to the people, okay? If you make one, two, or three people cry, then you've done your job. I'm home! Wow, it's hot in here. Grandma says call the Moon Man. <laughs> moon Man, the AC is out and my family is melted! At your service! There you go! Mission accomplished! Thanks, Moon Man! <sighs> The house is nice and cool again. Moon Man, you're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? And now back again to Cecil TV, 30 at 6, Tom Hannum. Tom, welcome. I'm glad to be here. L well, last, as I recall, last time you were here, you were telling us about a fundraiser that Cecil Land Trust had where you had a uh, rustic supper of some sort. Yeah, Robert Burns dinner celebrating. He was a, he was a farmer and, of course, a poet. And uh, we thought it was a good uh, blend with the Cecil Land Trust because we preserve farmland. Very successful event, and we're going to have it again next year. Good. You have another event coming up. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, Cycle for Cecil uh, is a bike ride. It's not a race uh, through Cecil County. And we have, uh, it's going to be this Saturday, the 28th. Uh, our weather forecast is sunny, 60, 70 degrees, which perfect. is uh, perfect for bicycling. So, and you have several routes, a 15-mile route, a 60-mile route, right? Yes, we have three routes. That's uh, 15, 35, and 60. And uh, they, uh, so you can come and, and bicycle whatever route you want to. Uh, each route, we do have a, a cue sheet uh, for the people that have never been on a bike uh, ride. But it, it tells you the road, how far you're going, and left turn or right turn or straight ahead. So you don't need a GPS? Uh, no, and we you also have signs too, right? We also uh, mark the roads. Uh, we have arrows that are actually on the road surface to tell you. And as a bicycler, uh, we set the first one maybe 30 feet before you get to the intersection. And of course, at the intersection, we have one. And then we also have signs at each turn that tell you the direction to go. That's pretty cool. And it's not too late for people to sign up. How would they sign up? No. Uh, we, uh, you can get on, a, we have a nice webpage 
uh, for the Cecil Land Trust. And uh, you can get on that and it'll tell you how to go ahead and sign up. But uh, I would encourage anybody that if it's a nice day, come out and ride with us and you can sign up the day of the event. And that's only $30 the day of, correct? Yeah, day of is only $30. We don't really view this as a fundraiser as much as a uh, promotion to preserve land for the Cecil Land Trust. Signing up in advance is $25, right? Yes, 25 if you sign up ahead of time. Well, I think from what you were explaining to me, Tom, <clears throat> it also raises the rider's awareness of all the different, on your map that you give out, has all the different preserved land. Yes, we, uh, this year we, we are going to have a, a map on the back of each cue sheet that uh, has all the preserved land in the county. And I think the ride is probably going to pass, go past at least a dozen different properties. So the rider will be able to tell which land is preserved. That's and cool. it's, it's a beautiful ride uh, through the countryside. And uh, I've given out a lot of these maps smaller. People that live in Cecil County don't know if they're living next to a piece of farm that's, uh, or a piece of property that's preserved or not. Well, you guys have such a wonderful mission, preserving the, the farms and the, and the rural character of Cecil County, which is so important to a lot of people, myself included. Uh, yes, and uh, we, uh, we also are involved in uh, stream restoration and uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation love uh, land trust because once that land is in preservation, it's forever. And that's a piece of property they don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, polluting the, the, the bay. It's, it's in trust forever. Well, that's a great mission. People can help. People can just come out and enjoy the festivities and ride day of. There's going to, for their, the small fee that they pay, they get a lot too, right? Don't they get a shirt like that? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we do have sponsors and uh, they do get a free t-shirt uh, and a ride like this. Uh, their support, so we have a uh, trek of Newark and also the Newark Bike Project, their own come. And if your bike needs uh, a repair or something, uh, or if you get a flat tire or breakdown on the uh, road, they will come out and get you back on the road. They're a great group, Tom. I brought a bike up there and they <coughs> taught me how to fix my bike using their tools and stuff. Yes, and uh, we would encourage anybody that comes to the ride or people that even don't come to the ride, it will give them the opportunity to donate bikes uh, if you bring them to Fair Hill that, that day on the 28th. So the ride starts and finishes at Fair Hill at the grandstands, right? That's correct. Uh, when we, uh, as we, this is our seventh year, and we have uh, picked out uh, landmarks in the county and tried to incorporate them into our ride. So uh, the cover bridge at Kilpin Falls right. is one of our stops. Uh, in Port Deposit, uh, the Bainbridge Museum is open that day, so people can uh, go in and experience that. Uh, two years ago, we included an Amish farm, and I'm sure that you're seeing a lot more Amish buggies on the road. Yes. And uh, the last two farms have been bought in Cecil County, have been bought by the Amish, and um, the Fair Hill uh, itself, and also the uh, Brick Meeting House at Calvert, the Quaker Meeting House. That's one of our rest areas. Sounds like a great day, great weather. Starts at 8.30, correct? Yeah, 8.30, uh, we're there and people start coming in about 7.30. And uh, the last rider usually goes out about 10, 10.30. And you work up a mighty fine appetite doing a lot of riding like that. Yes, uh, you can come and, and get fit uh, Kobe cream and enjoy yourself. There, right? And at the end of the ride, you do get free Kilby Cream ice cream. Sounds like a plan. Are you going to be riding? I unfortunately can't ride. I'm, I'm kind of the, the key person. Uh, each cue sheet has my uh, cell phone on it. And if somebody runs into trouble or breaks down or has any questions, they call me. And I uh, also uh, drive the route a couple times during the day to make sure that everything's going fine. Sounds like a great day. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having us. Let's get those wheels a rolling. <laughs> Welcome to 30 at 6, Ralph Nestor, Master Carver. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Ralph, you brought your fine feathered friends here, an array of tools, and uh, 
You're going to tell us a little bit about carving ducks. It looks like this is something that's really difficult to do. It's difficult, but there's a lot of uh, study materials these days, videos. Uh, you can uh, go to different places and take lessons, but uh, the most important thing is uh, detail. You know, you concentrate, uh, you, do, you do as much research as you do carbon time. How about the that? Re the research is probably the most important, so you don't make a mistake. And this little guy is your first? That is my first carving. I wasn't, I was working as a union laborer and a millwright, and um, a friend of mine stopped by and he said, Ralph, let's start carving some decoys. I said, man, I don't want to get into that. I've got other stuff to do. He said, come on, let's do it. So we started with probably one of the most difficult birds, that red-breasted merganser. And if you'll notice, he's square, he isn't rounded and doesn't, um, doesn't really have the right texture and shape on him. But that started it. And, and I've been carving ever since, and I just slowly got into it um, and the more detail, going to more shows, taking more lessons. And you've got a big show coming up, right? Yes, Ocean City, Maryland at the uh, Convention Center. That's the world? That's a world. That's called the Ward World Foundation wow. competition. Wow. Now, will you be bringing any of these ducks? <clears throat> no, uh, once you've uh, uh, showed a, shown a bird, uh, you can only show it one year. Right, okay. So you have something you're working on that you're going to, going uh, yes. to bring to Ocean yes. City, and that's the end of if April? If I make it, if I make it. Right, if we all that's, make it. Right, there you go. If well, you complete the project is what I should have said. So these knives, are you, just t you were telling me about an eagle that you made. You started actually with a chainsaw. I started with a chainsaw. It was a um, square block of Tupelo gum that comes out of the south, out of the swamps. And they only use the first six feet of it. After that, it's too grainy. Tupelo gum, gum is very dense, but you can actually texture it with your fingernail. It's it's soft also, but you couldn't that? you couldn't split it with an axe if you tried. No, I've had some gum that I tried to split. Oh yeah, you know what you know what gum is. Then if you try to split it for firewood, it don't work. It's tennis elbow waiting to happen. Right. <laughs> anyway, all these tools here, Ralph. So you, if you say you started with a chainsaw, you eventually get to this stuff here. Oh too. yes, you do. Once you once you do the rough work with a chainsaw, you um, you get draw knives, and then you'll get down to um, automated or, or, or like a rotary tool. Uh, um, like some these. people call them Dremels, yes. But we start with a, a two-inch uh, burrs and work your, you slowly work yourself down. But the, but the best shaping that you can do is with uh, a, an automatic or a, um, a motorized tool has a flat surface and you can only do so much with it. With the knives, if you take the knives, you can be more delicate, you can get more uh, shape, you can just uh, get a better feel of the bird with, with a knife. These are lifelike looking critters. Yes, well, uh, I had someone tell me one time, uh, and they said, Ralph, you might as well cheat and not do, uh, put all the texture in it because uh, you can't make a, a bird look real. Well, that sort of, I didn't like that, so I, uh, I put all the effort that I possibly can into a bird, and some of, of my birds are very realistic looking. Yeah, now, if somebody wanted you to carve a bird for them, how would they contact you? Chesapeake Bay uh, Studio Decoys on, on the inter I have a Facebook uh, or on internet. Wow, and you study under some of the old master carvers like uh, you were telling me, Bill, Bill Vesey? Yeah, uh, Mr. Bill Vesey, he's, uh, he's a character, he's a wonderful carver, he's been carving uh, for a lot of years and a great teacher, <clears throat> uh, great attitude. And he told me uh, one time, he said, Ralph, he said it's, it's simple how uh, to carve a duck. I said, what do you mean? He said, you, it's simple. You, you take a square block of wood and you take away everything that doesn't look like a duck. Well, Ralph, <clears throat> you've opened my eyes to some of this carving and you got a show in Ocean City. People can contact you at Chesapeake Bay Studio Decoys if they want to learn more about how to get into this, uh, this hobby, this, this yes. craft, this art. And don't forget, Ocean City world show of carving, right? Yes. End of April. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it.